So question six. AXZ Limited invented an ICT consultant. Invited, sorry, an ICT consultant to set up a computer network. The consultant linked all the computers to every other in the network. The nodes were connected to every other via dedicated link so that every node features a point to point connection to the opposite node. So required state the type of network topology on the above scene. So this type of network topology where each and every computer or in the in the network or each and every node is connected to one another is called full mesh topology. So in full mesh topology each and every node is connected to everyone via via maybe a dedicated link. So you have very many types of topology, but this is full mesh topology. Then you are told highlight five benefits associated with this full mesh topology. One is redundancy and reliability. So in full mesh topology, there's high redundancy and reliability. For example, if one link or node fails, there are alternative paths available for communication. Remember, we have a very big, high dense network of connection. So if a link or a node fails, there is an alternative path for the communication. So the network will still be uh, operational even if uh, maybe a particular node is disconnected. Two is it has higher data transfer rate because each node in this topology is dedicated to point to point connection with each other. So this can lead to higher data transfer rate and low congestion. For example, you cannot compare it with other type of topology where, for example, bus topology. And also scalability. It is very easy to add a new node in a, in, in a, in a, in a, in a full mesh topology. You will, you, there's no backbone, there's no cable that is running in the center that you will interfere, you have to disconnect, then you add another one. So it is very easy, it is very scalable to add a new, uh, a new, a new device. Then privacy and security. So in, in a full mesh topology, there's communication between nodes that is direct to one another. Remember the nodes are connected to one another. So it doesn't have to go to this node to pass to not then you get it so there's direct communication so there's no intermediary in between also lastly we have our oh, isolation of, of traffic each point-to-point -point link is in a full mesh is dedicated to a specific node so this isolation of traffic means that data is sent between nodes there's one computer and another one so each and every one of them is connected to, to a particular uh, a particular node then the next question there says outline four benefits associated with the use of pivot tables. So pivot tables, as we've seen in 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 in, in Excel, in Excel, for example, in in any spreadsheet program, uh, it helps in data summarization and aggregation. So if you are using a very big sheet, you are able to 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 quickly summarize and aggregate large amount of data, so that you can easily now create what we call reports, and even you can show maybe all the functions that you have, maybe the total, the averages. Then dynamic and interactive analysis. So people table provides a dynamic and interactive way to analyze data quickly. Because the data are arranged in rows and columns and values ex explore different aspects of the data. So you can easily analyze, you can easily analyze as you interact with it. Then we have data drilling and filtering. So uh, as we saw there at the beginning when we were doing some step-to-step -step way, pivot tables allow user to drill down into details of the data. For example, you can expand uh, or collapse level of data. You can, you can focus on a specific data set or maybe a specific column or a specific data row. You, you can also filter options that enable you to include or exclude some data out. So that is a very very wonderful feature again we have easy visualization and customization so you can easily customize and, and even do data presentation why because you are able to use uh, uh, visualization facilities there that are such as charts you are able to use uh, uh, other graphics columns and uh, and even other visualization appealing reports are there and lastly, you are able to validate data for accuracy. So you can automatically handle duplicate values. You can automatically remove errors. And 
even inconsistencies in, in, in this data to ensure that uh, the analysis remain accurate and up to date. Then question C was saying, evaluate five restoration procedures that could be used to recover lost data. So in this case, data has been lost and we are looking for a way to recover them. The first way is through backups and restore. So regular backups on a storage device. So for example, you could back, uh, backing up data means you, you place data or you store data in an alternative place. So you can regularly do that on secondary devices or, or off-site locations, for example, in, in a different geographical location to just uh, to ensure that in case of a loss, you can get a place to retrieve them back. And also we have point in time recovery. So in this, in this, in this type of, 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 of restore procedure, organization restore data at specific point in time. For example, we can do it in after one month, uh, data is, 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 is backed up. And also we have what we call disk imaging. So disk imaging is just complete, you create a complete copy of the entire storage device. You create a copy of maybe of operating system, application and data. So in case of any loss or failure, the organization can restore the entire disk image to bring the system back to this previous state. So that is what we call disk imaging. Then we also have data uh, reconstruction from redundant array. So uh, this redundant array dependent disk provides fault tolerance and data redundancy. In case of any failure in the disk, the systems can reconstruct this lost data by using priority information stored in other disk array. So RAID is a very important recovery mechanism recover data that has been lost. It's able to get back all the all the information through uh, this technology. Then we have data recovery software. Data recovery software, they are just designed to recover accidentally lost files from any storage medium. So it, they can scan the storage device and recover data that is, sto is stored in this in these devices uh, before the, the data was lost. Then we have described five features of time sharing operating system. So time sharing operating system is the type of operating system that allows uh, multiple processes to run in, uh, in the CPU. But at the same time, it allocates or it gives small time segments to, to these processes to ensure that all of them run at the same time. So any features of this would be one is multitasking. So time sharing operating system enable multitasking where multiple users or processes can execute concurrently. So as we have said, each user or each task is allocated a slice, a slice, very more small fraction of time, CPU time, so, so that it allows the process to, it allows the CPU to run on each and every uh, application without any delay. And then we have what we call CPU scheduling. So the operating system uses CPU scheduling algorithm to allocate this time slice. Remember, all these processes cannot run at the same time. They cannot be engaged by the CPU at the same time. There must be some way, there must be some procedure that the CPU uses to, to allocate, to switch in between these ones. So this is what we call CPU scheduling. And also we have interactive environment. So time sharing systems are designed to support interactive computing. Why? Because they pro, uh, the user is able to use the computer effectively when they are able to, to use input and output uh, devices that are needed and also to interact with the system very fast or we to say uh, in real time. So they provide an interface. For example, I'm using a computer right now and I'm able to input data and I'm able to interact with the computer using my graphics. In my screen there are graphics. They are there are icons, so those are making my interaction with the computer very easy. And also what we call resource sharing. So users share various system resources. For example, users could share CPU, memory, output devices, input devices. So the operating system manage how these resources are being shared without any, you know, a, a, a system, a processor could be holding up a resource 
which is not being used at the same time is needed by another process that is waiting for it. So it is the operating system that is managing how these resources are being shared between different users. And then lastly, we have what we call user isolation. So time sharing system ensure that users' isolations and protections are in place so that one process do not interfere with another process. So each process is protected from interference by the other process. So this or, or even applications, one application can run and interfere with, with the other application. So user isolation is very important in that aspect.